Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy Collects. We are here with Highway to Hell, and I have more of my Ghost Rider collection from the 90s to show off to you guys because the new book comes out in just a couple days. And if you can tell, uh, I am very congested right now. I'm not feeling well. That's why you're not going to see my face on camera in this episode uh, because I look pretty beat up. <laughs> and I've been having like these uh, blood vessels popping in my eye, and it's it's been crazy. So my eye like turned really red uh, the other day, and my roommate was like, are you okay? Are you okay? And I was like, yeah, it's like my head just hurts and, you know, I just need to rest. So I've uh, been on bed rest for like the last two days and they were my only two days off. <laughs> Although I think I might have one more day off coming up soon. Uh, but then I'm going to take a vacation day just to get some more rest. So, uh, yeah, it's just been it's been brutal, <laughs> man. Uh, this uh, cold came out of nowhere, but this headache that I've had has really come out of nowhere. And, and don't worry. You know, I know some of you know that I have a history with that kind of stuff. Um, I already been checked out uh, and I, I seem to be doing OK. It just just a bad uh, headache spell or whatever it might be the change in weather could a lot of things could affect it um and it could be stress so uh, you know so i'm just trying to relax so that's why today i want to talk about comic books and i want to talk ghost rider because we have the new series coming out by ed breeson where D uh, danny ketch the ghost rider here from the 90s returns and in the last video that we did which was a while ago it was like months ago um there was uh you know that we went through like 1990 to 1991 and that was like the first full year of ghost rider and dan ketch in the marvel universe and that's what we're going to do here i have pretty much, and I'm, I might be missing a couple appearances, but they're appearances that I ultimately decided weren't worth getting, but I have almost every appearance of Dan Ketch. Um, with the Ghost Rider lore, there was Johnny Blaze. He was the first Ghost Rider, uh, and that's the one Nick Cage played in the two movies. But then there was a second Ghost Rider named Dan Ketch, who is Johnny Blaze's brother, we find out. They have the same mother. And uh, and it's I'm excited to see, uh, you know, like, go through this collection again with you guys, because I've reread some of these. This isn't me, like, talking too much about the stories. This is more or less me talking about the character and, uh, and just kind of showing off his appearances. And what we talked about in the last episode was it, with the first year, of Dan Ketch, they really wanted him to be popular, uh, and they they threw him in everything. They threw him. He was a, a member of the Fantastic Four within his first year of being in comics, uh, which is crazy. Um, you know, you hear all these people nowadays talk about um, Mary Sue's and all this other stuff. Dan Ketch was given like full reign of the Marvel Universe. It, it seems, I, and I don't know if that's because the first issue sold so well and he just looked cool and he's very like you know late eighties, early nineties design. Like you know, they, the original uh, Johnny Blaze was kind of evil can ish. And so that worked for that time period, but this updated one with the chains and the spikes and everything, I think people really gravitated to this instantly. And so I don't know if it was Marvel, you know, planning like, Hey, let's just throw this guy in every book and see what happens. Or if they were just going, they were reacting to like how well the first couple issues sold because pretty soon into his book, you know, Dan Ketch started appearing all over the Marvel universe. Case in point right here, we're going to go through these books here. This is the, uh, you know, middle of 1992, I think going up to 1993. So it's like May or June of 92 to May of 93. And that's what all these books are here. So we have Punisher War Journal to start the year off. And, uh, and that's uh, issue 29 there. And it came out or it's solicited for April, but it probably came out either a little bit before or after. I can't remember. So, um, yeah, I have Flesh and Bone part. I think this is part one. So we have that issue there. Then we're going to go to the actual Ghost Rider series, which is uh, number 13. So we went through the first 12 issues of Ghost Rider in the first video. Now we're going to go through issues 13 through 24, plus every appearance he made in between those issues coming out. Uh, so yeah, so you have this great cover here. I think Texieri did this one. I can't remember. Um, I love it, though. It's awesome. Like uh, Ghost Rider fought some interesting villains like they made there's a lot of villains that didn't hold up like they would come in for one issue and then uh, maybe you would maybe they brought him back one more time but his rogues gallery wasn't that memorable i mean until he brought in vengeance and you brought in those characters and johnny blaze with the robot arm and and you brought in like uh, like scarecrow appeared a couple times uh so uh so yeah they they tried things but mostly he was great in interacting with everybody else and that's what marvel kind of leaned him towards in the beginning here so there's war journal number 30 that's the second part of flesh and bone um, and this is where Johnny Blaze comes back. So in the comics, I think there was a little bit of this mystery building. There was a guy following, you know, Dan Ketch around, kind of curious what's going on, what's up with him. And they reveal that it's Johnny Blaze. And Johnny Blaze comes in hot, <laughs> basically, and he tries to kill Dan Ketch. He doesn't know anything about Dan Ketch. He doesn't really know uh, that they're related at this point. Um, he's just the guy who was the host of the Ghost Rider at one point. And he is like, oh, okay, that tormented me, that ruined my life. But now that I'm free of it, 
I want to stop or save the person who is now, you know, taken over by the Ghost Rider. Little does he know this is not the same spirit uh, of vengeance that took over him. So, uh, and it's not through the same deal. Like, you know, Dan Ketch didn't make a deal with Mephisto in order to become Ghost Rider. Something completely different was happening. There was a medallion, it was hooked to a motorcycle, uh, and it was placed there by their mother, um, hoping, you know, or believing in, you know, like uh, some... Uh, fortune that you know the, her son one of her sons would find it or something so yeah it was uh, it's crazy so or maybe uh, dan was cursed to find it uh because dan ketch is not a fan of himself being ghostwriter he's he kind of embraces it a little bit he sees the you know the the good it can do and he tries but uh but he also by the end of his run a lot of bad happens to dan so after that he you know he, he becomes a completely different character and that's why i'm excited to see him come back in the comics because he's very broken and uh I don't know. And this series always reminded me ever since this issue here, uh, Johnny Blaze versus Ghost Rider. When this started happening, I was like, okay, I, I like this. I like this version of Johnny Blaze. He's like this old grizzled kind of guy who just comes in with guns. Like, right, he's got like a, a mystical gun and, and stuff. And later on, like, I'm a big Supernatural fan. So when that show started, I think I got about halfway through season one or maybe a little bit into season two. And I started going, holy crap, Supernatural has a lot of similarities to Ghost Rider. I mean, they fight a lot of the same enemies in the first five seasons too. Like, uh, you know, if, if you don't count Lucifer, you count him as Mephisto or something. Uh, you have that, you have Lilith, uh, you have all these characters that the, you know, the two brothers, the Winchester brothers came across in their show. So that's what I love about Supernatural. That's why I it became a fan like very quickly. I was watching, I was like, all right, it's a pretty good show with monsters every week, it's fun. But that's when I was like, oh my God, this reminds me of the 90s Ghost Rider run. And from then on, I was like, it's two brothers driving across country, uh, you know, killing monsters with mystical weapons i love it and that's pretty much what this run is so if you're a supernatural fan you may really like this run overall um we have quasar here number 23 i think there's like two other issues of quasar that uh he appears in the ghost rider appears in i can't remember um but i don't think i have all of them i think i just have this one maybe one more i can't remember i think i because i i don't know i think he has a cameo in like issue 22 like at the end and i was like yeah that's not worth getting it's just like one or two pages um but maybe i still will track that down at some point uh this is a very famous cover it's the glow in the dark cover by mark texieri uh texiera and uh this is cool. I mean, most people, when they think of Ghost Rider, like I said, they usually think of the 90s Ghost Rider. A lot of people are like, oh, yeah, the guy with the, the chains and the spikes on his shoulders. And, and blah. Yeah, that's not really Johnny Blaze. That's uh, that's Dan Ketch. And so uh, so this cover, though, stands out. A lot of people know this image. A lot of comic, even casual comic collectors in the 90s kind of know what this comic book is. And it, yes, it does glow in the dark, uh, which is cool. And it still glows in the dark to this day, which is freaking awesome. Um, so then we have Daredevil here. So again, him, you know, Ghost Rider just being put in every Marvel book that they can. So we got him in Ghost Rider here, which is awesome. Him in, uh, you know, putting something like Ghost Rider where it's a creature from hell and they're putting him in with a Catholic superhero, uh, you know, like a Daredevil here. Um, that's great. It, it, it raised a lot of questions with Matt Murdock. It, it, uh, it had it, their relationship in this issue is interesting it, it's neat and i always wish they explored it more i mean these two meet maybe two other times in the comics uh maybe two or three other times but uh, i always really liked the the potential for what they could have told in stories sometimes they do sometimes they don't in that issue though they set it up nicely and i was like i, I want to see more of this relationship and they eh, even though they met a couple more times we never really got it too much um ghost rider number 16 here so this is kind of playing off of a spider-man book that happened where uh, you know ghost rider i think we talked about it in the first year of the books uh where ghost rider sh teamed up with spider-man to fight some of uh, his villains and stuff and so we have hobgoblin here and uh and you know we have like a reunion of some of these characters only adding in johnny blaze so this is kind of a, a cool team-up book and they're kind of dealing with ramifications from that first crossover uh, Marvel Comics Presents, you know, we talked about a lot of these issues. This was Ghost Rider's second monthly title, basically, because uh, that book was selling pretty well. And then it became a uh, Marvel Comics Presents became a Wolverine plus two or three other characters book. And, you know, it's a flip book. So on this side is Ghost Rider. You flip it over. It's a Wolverine story. And uh, and so that's what it became for like a good like 20 or 30 issues was they were like, hey, these are our two most popular characters. Let's put them in one place every month where someone can read about them. And this was a big book I collected in the nineties because there was a lot of characters like cable. I was like, all right, who's cable. And, uh, you know, and, and I, even though I was reading some X-Men books, I knew who Bishop was the time traveler Bishop. But at this point I didn't really know who cable was. I had kind of fallen out 
of some X-Men stuff. I wasn't reading New Mutants and things like that. I was mainly just reading the two main X-Men books and sometimes X-Factor. So Cable, I was kind of like, oh, who's Cable? And so this was kind of my introduction right here to the character of Cable. And so that's awesome too, because it's a time traveler meeting like a spirit of vengeance from the modern day. I just always thought the people they teamed Ghost Rider up with were were made for interesting team ups um so yeah again here we got issue 91 of marvel comics presents i like that issue sam keith he did a lot of the covers um here again we have number 17 of ghost rider keep your distance spider-man hobgoblin is mine i think the cover might oh no there's spider-man there i was like oh does it wrap around but no yeah it's spider-man's on the cover so yeah there was a, a a rivalry between ghost rider and hobgoblin they started to build up in the comics and i think eventually they, they that gave birth or brought in in another way they brought in Dima Goblin which also had like a you know a, little, a slight rivalry sometimes with Ghost Rider so more you know Marvel Comics presents Cable and Ghost Rider this storyline I, I don't remember too much of it but uh you know I love this where it's like uh they blew off like a panel of the of the uh, comic and you can see inside like the, the first page <laughs> uh that's the kind of fourth wall breaking a little bit there but uh yeah this is this was a fun little read you know um but i, I can't remember the full story uh, to be honest with you so i'm gonna have to go back and reread some of these um i just remember liking it and liking the art and uh and i love those covers sam keith covers are awesome um, the Resurrection of Barbara Ketch. So this is where we start getting answers. This is another iconic cover. A lot of people remember this one. And uh, it's great. This is where they start answering, like, who was Barbara Ketch? You know, how, how um, what was her relationship like to Johnny Blaze's father, to her, her sons? You know, like, uh, obviously, Dan Ketch, she helped raise along with his sister. Uh, but uh, but what about Johnny? Why Why, why didn't she stick around Johnny's dad raised Johnny all by himself, like kind of in the circus and stuff. And, you know, they became like a, you know, like the evil Knievel guys and stuff. So it's interesting. They, I, I love that, you know, uh, Howard Mackey, who was the writer of the series, was like, I want to add emotion to this. Like, I don't want this just to be, all right, he's a cool guy with a flaming skull head. That's great. That draws everybody in. But let's actually tell a story here. And that, to me, is amazing. I love that. They were like, all right, the I, the imagery sells it. You know, you see this on the shelf. You're like, I got to pick that up. What's that about? Why does this guy have a flaming skull? Like, I got to check this out. And he they use that to be like, all right, let's let's not just make it full of dumb filler action, even though there's some fun action in it, but like, let's not just do that. Let's actually tell a story with real characters and ramifications. And let's tie this in to the classic Ghost Rider. And I thought Howard Mackey rocked it and did a really great job. Um, so the, yeah, the Ghost Rider cable stuff. So Marvel Comics presents those issues. Those stories usually ran at least, you know, five or 10 issues. So, uh, you know, if not more, sometimes more, sometimes less. Uh, but yeah, so this, this Ghost Rider cable series is still going on. And then another great image here. Uh, this was during the 30th anniversary of the Hulk, 1962 to 1992. Um, and, uh, yeah, another great image there to, you know, his pants are all blasted up. Uh, he's got his big shoulder pads on. So yeah, seeing these two hang out, work together, a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, again, like I said, Supernatural seasons one through five, they were dealing with angels and demons and, and uh, Lucifer and everything like that. And no different with Ghost Rider. If you want to call this season two, you know, he starts to interact more with Mephisto, with some of these other characters, these damned characters from hell. Um, and they start ramping that side of the story up too, especially after some of the reveals from the Barbara Ketch issue which came before. Um, we have Ghost Rider and Cable more, you know, more of that here. And then I think uh, maybe one or two more of those issues here. Uh, look at that drawing. That's insane. <laughs> it looks weird. Like you're like, oh, that looks like someone messed up. But no, that just looks awesome. Like it just like, I, I like how just unusual it looks. That's not really what a skull looks like, obviously. And Sam Keith knows that. He, he draws heads all the time. But he still was like, oh, let's amp this up a little bit. Let's make it a little different and like have the mouth come down lower and stuff. And yeah, it looks it looks creepy. Yeah. Good job, Sam Keith. Um, all right. So we have Ghost Rider 20 here. And these are those two. Uh, this is a Don't Kill Zodiac, Kill Me. That's the character there uh, who was in the cover of the last issue with Mephisto. And these two characters were, you know, like sent uh, by Mephisto and uh, and tied to Mephisto to come in and take care of uh, the Ghost Rider. Because again, this is not a Ghost Rider that Mephisto made. Uh, Mephisto didn't make this Ghost Rider. This, was, this is something else is happening here. And so when Mephisto starts to get involved, that's what I really liked because you're thinking, oh, okay, at this point in the book, at 20 issues in, I started reading some of the other Johnny Blaze stuff because they reprint, uh, reprinted them in like uh, Ghost Rider Classics or something like that, or, or Ghost Rider Strikes Again, some old stories. And I was like, okay, I get it. He, uh, the first Ghost Rider made a deal with the devil, and that's, and that's how he got his powers. But uh, 
but and then it turned out he was something that the devil couldn't control somehow so i was like ah, i don't really like i don't like that too much like i mean that's kind of spawn does that too but spawn i think did a better job at explaining why uh you know malbolgia couldn't really control the suit um and, and control spawn uh and they i think they did a little bit of a better job explaining that with johnny blaze i was like i don't know if i fully buy this and why they can't control him i kind of like the explanation in the second movie spirit of vengeance where they say the ghost rider spirit is from heaven and that's why uh, lucifer can't control it and i'm like okay that makes a lot of sense uh but that really wasn't what they talked about in the comics so Anyway, by this point, I already learned more about Johnny Blaze and what his background was. So uh, I was getting interested. And the fact that they were like, hey, this is like it, it, it dawned on me as I was getting to this point in the book. I'm like, oh, wait. Yeah, right. Mephisto didn't make this guy. So he would have a different kind of interest in him than, uh, you know, than he did, you know, previous Ghost Riders. So, yeah, I thought that was cool. Um, Ghost Rider, Wolverine, Punisher, Hearts of Darkness. This is a great one shot uh, drawn by John Romita Jr., um, it's fantastic. It's very, uh, intense. Uh, basically it's Ghost Rider, Wolverine and Punisher all working together, uh, when they find out that, uh, Blackout or Blackheart, uh, Blackheart, who is Mephisto's son, um, they find out that he is wanting to take the throne from his father. They, he wants to destroy Mephisto. And so these three are like, well, that's interesting. Uh, we don't like Mephisto, but are you going to be any different? And we already hate you, and we already know you're not very much. You're very different from your father. We know you're. We know you're a scumbag too. So, why should we help you? And that's kind of the storyline they go through. And it's like you know, uh, Blackheart wants three killers, even though Dan is pretty innocent for the most part. It's the spirit of vengeance that that pulls him to that. Whereas Wolverine and Punisher willfully kill. So it's a great dynamic. There's there's a lot of really great dialogue moments in this one, and the action and the art is fantastic. Um, but it also sets up. This is kind of part one of a two part story, and I think in like two years or like you know when we do more of these episodes, you'll see the second part. We'll talk about. It. I think it's called Dark Design, and we'll talk more about that. Um, this is the Marvel Holiday Special number one. I think this is the one where a kid mistakes Ghost Rider for Santa Claus, and uh, and he mistakes the motorcycle for like the sleigh. Um, I guess it's like some kid who doesn't really believe in Santa and then uh, bad things start happening to him and his mom, I think. And then Ghost Rider shows up and he's like, oh, wait, that so so Santa's not really a fat guy with a beard on a sled. He's a, a guy with a flaming skull on a motorcycle. <laughs> he's like, oh, that is kind of cool. That, that So I know who the real Santa is or whatever. Um, so I thought that was kind of a cute little fun storyline. Um, and they still make Ghost Rider like pretty hard edged in that one, too. Uh, so then this is the collection, Ghost Rider and Cable, Servants of the Dead. This is collecting all the Marvel Comics Presents issues. So all those ones we went through already, like 90 through 97 or whatever issues they were, they're all collected in this one book because remember those stories in Marvel Comics Presents were only eight page stories. It was on one side, you got eight pages of Ghost Rider and Cable and then like eight pages of another character and we flipped it over, it was eight Wolverine pages and eight some other character. So, uh, so really this is just a collection of seven books that had eight pages each in it. So that's why it looks regular comic book length, uh, because, or slightly giant sized, but you know, it's slightly thicker, but yeah, not too many pages in there. Um, I like this cover snow blinded. This is a pretty good one. Uh, I, uh, thinking of the, I'm trying to think of the villain he fights in this one and I'm, I'm blank and maybe it is snow blind. Maybe that's the character's name too, but, um, snow blind is obviously when like, uh, when you're out in the ice and stuff and, uh, I think you know, your eyes get affected by the, the temperature or the weather, or whatever, and then you can temporarily not see. Uh, I believe that's what Snowblind is, <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong. So that's kind of the storyline here is, uh, is you have a, a, a ghost rider that's uh, temporarily blinded and, uh, and having to battle his way and, and you know, uh, figure out how to survive, I guess. Um, it's been a while since I read that issue. And again, so if I get anything wrong, feel free to correct me down below because I'm, I'm I haven't like I haven't reread a lot of this stuff. I mean, I have, but years and years ago. Uh, I just focus more on you know collecting it. That's all I really cared about. Um, and case in point, uh, this is why I brought up. If I'm wrong, let me know down below. Because earlier I mentioned that Spider-Man crossover. Actually, this is it. I thought it took place in year one. There was a Spider-Man Ghost Rider crossover against uh, you know um, that Todd McFarlane drew that had uh, that had Hobgoblin in it. But this is the storyline I was thinking of, uh, Revenge of the Sinister Six. Uh, this is a six-part storyline that came out in the book, you know, in the page of Spider-Man. I think Eric Larson did some of the art and stuff. And uh, 
it has Spider-Man and Ghost Rider and other characters teaming up against the Sinister Six. So basically, Spider-Man creates his own six to fight against the Sinister Six, and Ghost Rider is one of them. Um, but so that earlier when we were talking about the Hobgoblin issue, uh, that was set up in two Spider-Man issues, you know, the, the relationship between Spider-Man, Ghost Rider, and Hobgoblin, and then it continued in those two Ghost Rider issues, and this is kind of where it, it pays off at the end, where they all come together. Um, so yeah, we have uh, Ghost Rider here versus these ninjas. I think this is the hand um, from Daredevil, I think, but also I think this is Death, this could be Death Watch, because I think I see Death Watch back there. Yeah, it looks like Death Watch. So Death Watch had his own group of ninjas too, and I, I don't know if they were a spinoff of the hand or or what because i know a lot of that stuff started connecting together in the 90s uh but yeah this is the return of death watch uh from the earlier issues that's the the team or the the bad guy that uh almost killed dan Ketch's sister and chased him and and what how he ended up being ghost rider when he found the bike in the cemetery so yeah so death watch is returned in this one in issue 22 uh then we have death lock number nine roadkill i love that <laughs> i love this cover too it's fantastic and uh, and we have Deathlock now interacting with the Ghost Rider and, you know, being sent on a mission to uh, take out someone and then Ghost Rider showing up and the two of them uh, getting into it there. So, uh, yeah, I like that. And I like the 90s Deathlock. He was pretty cool. I like the the later, late 90s Deathlock miniseries. Uh, that was really good, too. It wasn't a Marvel Knights book, but it felt like it could have been. Um, but, yeah, that one was really good. Uh, Death Watch will die for this. So, yeah, again, this is the second part to the Death Watch storyline. Another great cover there, Ghost Rider number 23. Um, we have Marvel Comics Presents 98, and so we're going back to the, uh, the, the you know, crossover book, uh, the book that Ghost Rider, his, essentially his second monthly book, and once they saw sales on this doing really well and sales on the main book not dropping too much, they were like, okay, we can make officially a second monthly Ghost Rider book. So when they decided to do that, they started taking Ghost Rider out of Marvel Comics Presents, and they were putting him in a new book called Spirits of Vengeance, but we'll get to that. I think that's next year. Um, so we'll get to that very soon. And then we have again here, Spider-Man, uh, Spider uh, Ghost Rider, uh, issue 99. Spider-Man's on the cover. That's why I said that. Uh, Marvel Comics presents Ghost Rider 99. And uh, look at that. It's awesome. More Sam Keith stuff. He gave him the cable shoulder pads, which is awesome. Uh, I love Sam Keith stuff. Uh, the way he draws skeletons too. Like that's so, that's so interesting. It's like, it's so, it's more abstract than, than how you typically see Ghost Rider drawn. And so for that reason, it's, it's cool to me. It looks neat. Um, and then, of course, we have a second part of Deathlock here, round two, Chain Reaction. Uh, so this wraps up that storyline that was set up in the Deathlock book. And the, again, Marvel just trying to, you know, push, uh, trying to push sales on this book. I think at this point now, when Ghost Rider is in another book, they're like, hey, these other books aren't selling well. Let's put Ghost Rider in for an issue or two and help boost the sales. So that's kind of where we are now. Before they were like, oh, let's put him in with all the big guys, like, you know, Daredevil and uh, the X-Men and, and Spider-Man. Let's have him interact with those guys and help increase his popularity. And now that he has increased popularity, we can put him in Deathlock books and help sell Deathlock books. So that was kind of the, the goal there. Um, 24, this is a, oh, I guess it was a three-part story wrapping up the Death Watch thing. It might even go into issue 25. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, we have Death Watch coming back. This time without his mask, you're seeing who he is. Learn more about his backstory. Um, so that's another good issue there. Marvel Comics presents 100. And what I like about this cover is on the flip side of it is... Wolverine up there and Ghost Rider being crushed underneath the 100. Uh, so that was fun that they had a little, you know, a little bit of fun with that, with the, with this cover and Sam Keith did it. So yeah, no variants on these because you just had to flip it over and get a different cover if you wanted it. So yeah, that's awesome. And that was a big storyline uh, wrapping up Ghost Rider in uh, the Marvel Comics Presents book. I think he does appear more in the next couple issues of uh, Marvel Comics Presents, but then they start toning him down after that. Um, Sleepwalker, another character. They were like, hey, this guy, sales aren't great. We'd love to push sales, get you know, get him up there, and uh, let's announce that Ghost Rider is going to show up in a Sleepwalker book. And Sleepwalker is a kind of an interesting character. I wish they could do more with him, and I wish he had a, a concept that was interesting enough to pull in a bigger audience. Uh, but hey, some characters you know, aren't for that. Some characters exist to kind of have a backup story in Marvel Comics Presents, and maybe Sleepwalker could survive more in a book like that, you know, where, where Wolverine's also in the book and get people interested in him in that way. Uh, but whenever he got his own book, you know, like this case, it didn't really last too, too long, maybe maybe 20 issues, I can't remember, so someone can let me know down below. Uh, but putting Ghost Rider in probably helped. It got me to buy it. It's the only Sleepwalker issue I own, so that's always, that's good. It works on some level. And then this is the last book for the you know, the end of this year. This is uh, Marvel Comics, our Marvel Collector's Edition presents 
Charleston Chew, Wolverine number one, and you see little Ghost Rider there. When you flip it over, it has Spider-Man, and it's like a Spider-Man story on the other side with someone else. So this is also like a Marvel Comics Presents where it's a, a flip book. But the only way to get this, I remember I was sp uh, spending time with my grandparents during the summertime because uh, after my parents split up, uh, on the, in the summer, I would go stay with my grandma and grandpa uh, up in Weirton, West Virginia. And uh, they had a little store there that sold Charleston Chew, which is something wasn't sold where I lived down south. I could never find any Charleston Chews. So when I got up there, I saw that this promo was still going. And I was like, all right. So you had to eat like, or you had to buy at least six Charleston Chews. So I was doing yard work and mowing the lawn and helping, helping around the house and stuff. And instead of going to buy comics with that money for the time I was there for the summer, I was going and buying Charleston Chews and uh, taking the wrappers and sending them out. So this is not my original copy of this. I can't remember what happened to the one that I, I mailed away for. I can't remember. This one I picked up on eBay for like five bucks. Um, or maybe I bought on Mile High Comics. I can't remember. But either way, I, this is not my original, which is a shame. I can't. I don't know where the original is. Um, you know, moving all these years and selling collections, sometimes things actually end up in boxes that you don't mean to, and then you sell them. So I can't remember where the original is. But at least I was able to find one for really cheap. I think I got it for like two bucks on uh, milehighcomics.com. So uh, yeah, so this was fun, and it has a Ghost Rider appearance in it. It's only like six pages, maybe, or four pages. Uh, it's not a lot. <laughs> but it, it's still, I was like, I can't, I won't have a complete collection without it. So uh, anyway, that's I know it's not a lot, but, you know, I just, I won't have a complete collection without it. So that is my collection there for year two of Ghost Rider. Let's bring all these other ones in. All right. Yes. Uh, so that is year two. That is 1991, I guess, uh, to 1990, or was it like uh, um, May, May or June of 1991 to uh, May of 1992. So, yeah, and you'll see, like, I think the next year from 92 to 93, it is a lot. There are a lot of books in that year for sure. Um, and uh, I think you'll you'll see that. Like when, when I bring out the next stack for the next episode, it's massive. It is it is really intense. Um, so uh, so yeah, we'll we'll dig into that. I have another shorter episode I'm going to make next with uh, uh, Ghost Rider Collection. Uh, we'll make real quick next after this. But for this one, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, uh, do you have any of these issues? Have you read them? I know our friends at the Ghost Rider podcast, uh, they talked about a lot of these issues too. So I'll put a link to them down below. If you want to hear in-depth analysis of these issues, I highly recommend go check them out. This is just a collections video. This is just me talking briefly and, and just telling you what I think I remember. But of course, I could get all that information wrong. Uh, so, you know, I would defer to them and their analysis of, of these books uh, way over the, you know, depending on me for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, this was a fun second year, but the third year gets intense. The, the stack is almost twice, I think, of this. But then every year after that, the stack gets lower and lower and lower. Ghost Rider stops appearing in other people's books. Um, and the popularity of the character starts to die down, unfortunately. Um, but he had a good like four or five year run. And that's what we're going to talk about in these first couple examinations of these uh, of this collection. So you'll see big stacks uh, for the next like two episodes. But then after that, it'll probably start dying down some. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. In the next episode, we're going to talk about The Road to Ghost Rider, which is a, a series of books that have been coming out over the past few months that are leading up to the return of Dan Ketch in his own monthly book, which comes out Wednesday. And I don't know when this episode's going up. That's Monday right now. I'll try to get it posted as soon as possible. Uh, but, you know, in the case I'm late or whatever, you know, forgive me. But uh, I'll try to get that Road to Ghost Rider one up as soon as possible as well. Thank you so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we'll see you in the future. Peace.